If you're not using fields in AutoCAD, you're missing out on one of the biggest time savers that it has to offer. Fields allow you to automatically and consistently automate many pieces of your text within your drawings. Things like revision numbers, dates, drawing names, areas, and even block counts can all be automated and scripted into a piece of text. This is going to update automatically when things change within your drawing and save you a ton of time and accidental errors. In today's video, I'm going to share a bunch of my favorite tips, tricks, and exactly how to take advantage of fields within AutoCAD. Let's jump right in. So what is a field? So within AutoCAD, you have the option of inserting fields into your text objects, whether it's an M text, a D text, or a variety of other options within CAD. Anywhere within a note where you can edit some text, typically you're going to be able to right click and insert field. You can also use the control and then F command to automatically bring this window up. Once it's opened up, you have the field dialog box. Now from here, you can choose the different field names that are available within your drawing. Now these are going to vary and we're gonna to touch on a handful of these within this video. But to start, I'm gonna show you a quick and simple one. And that is how to create a drawing file path script that goes along the side of your drawing so that you'll never wonder where a file is saved. So we're just gonna copy this piece of text by typing in CO, and now we're just gonna place it down here on the bottom right. I'm gonna rotate it so that it is facing up. And we're just gonna make this a long text box that goes up to here, so that this text is just going to display up the side of my page. Now, if we double click within our text box, I'm gonna show you how to insert that field. So I'm gonna delete that piece of text and whatever's in my box. I'm going to right click and insert field. And then from here, you can go into the drop down, and this is going to control which categories of data that you're pulling from. Uh, for our case, we wanna pull from the document category. And as you'll see through as we move through here, uh, many of the options that you're gonna want are probably in the document area here. So if you'd like to pull from the file name or file path, you simply select file name. You can choose path and name, path only, or just the file name. Now, depending on what you're doing this for, if it's an internal thing or an external thing, you may wanna decide based on that. But for our case, we're gonna put the entire file path and file name in this piece of text and we're simply going to hit OK. So you can see it's now automatically pasted the uh, file path for our drawing and now you may not want to plot this all the time if you're sending things out to the client but for internal plots and drawings this is a great thing to have. It allows you to find your files quickly and easily especially if you're on a com complicated network or cloud server where you're storing all of your files. Now, once you've added any field into AutoCAD to edit it, you can simply double click within the text and then double click on the field. Now you're going to be able to change what it's linked to and edit any of these settings within it. Uh, you can also have this, if I hit cancel here, you can just select the text and edit it just like any other text. So if I wanna make this smaller, I can make it 1 16th high. You can see down there, I can change the layer or the color, whatever I would like here. All of these settings are the same as almost every other object within AutoCAD, and they're all editable just like this was text. Now, the gray background hatch behind a field is just that. It's just a background behind the field. It's not actually going to plot. So when this prints, it's just gonna print like any piece of text. The gray is just an indicator that this is a linked piece of text and not necessarily editable in the same way that normal text is. I can't change the text within the gray block because it's pulling from somewhere else. To edit that text, say if it was pulling from a drawing name or a client, you would have to go to where it's pulling from to edit that text from there. Now, in that case, many times you're going to want to link your drawing title block information to a sheet set or drawing properties so that it can be edited in one place. You're never going to have to open up 5, 10, 15 drawings to edit each piece of text anymore. You can simply open up the main file, change your drawing properties, and that's going to change all of the text in every layout tab that you may have. Now, if you're using sheet sets, you can change it in the sheet set manager. You can open that by SSM is the command and you can open the sheet set manager. 
This video is not going to go into sheet sets. I have other ones on my channel if you want to search for those, or if you want to learn and create your own title blocks linked to sheet sets, as well as learn how to operate and use sheet sets like a pro, don't forget to check out my course. And right now I've got it bundled together with a ton of other options. So if you get it now, you're going to get my AutoCAD Kickstarter course, which is for the basics. It's going to teach you from zero to competent. And then you get my AutoCAD fundamentals and workflows course, which is going to teach you the more intricate aspects of AutoCAD, things like templates, layers, XRefs, plotting, packaging, sheet sets, and more. You're also going to get my AutoCAD drawing title blocks and templates, as well as some cheat sheets, checklists, and an AutoCAD productivity webinar. All of that's included in the same package, which I'll put that link up above and down below in the description. Now, continuing on, I'm going to show you some other unique use cases for fields. So as I mentioned, you can link them to sheet sets, which is like a drawing index. It's going to allow you to name and number all of your sheets and pull that information directly into your title blocks. Again, that's all covered in my course, but for now I'm going to show you a couple other cool tricks. You can make this text here automatically update based on whatever the layout tab name is. This is a great trick for smaller sections of drawings where you're only going to have one DWG and you just want to name them after your tabs. This also keeps things organized not only in your tabs but with your drawing numbers or names. So we've right clicked on this piece of text here. We're going to insert a field and we're going to go to other here and we're going to go to system variables. Now if over here on the right you just simply type in C and T you're going to go to the C tab and this is the tab text variable. Uh, typically I'll use uppercase. It'll just change all of the letters to uppercase. This keeps your drawing titles or names consistent. Uh, and then hitting OK, it's now going to pull that text. So you can just adjust your text block here so that it fits and click outside. Now you've got a field that automatically updates based on your layout tab name. So you could call this uh, say you want to give it a drawing number, so 2025-01-100. You hit enter, and now you can see nothing's changed. That's because fields, this is a tip that you're going to want to remember, fields only update when you save, open, or refresh, or regen a drawing. So you can save your drawing and this is going to update. You can open your drawing and it's going to freshly update all of these. Or you can simply type in regen and hit enter. That's going to re-pull the information from all of the blocks within the drawing if anything changes. Things like your drawing file path, drawing numbers, names, revisions, all of those will get updated when you type in regen or save, assuming you've changed those values somewhere. Now, another great tool within fields is the ability to link text to various objects within drawings. This can save you time and errors when it comes to things like block counts within your drawing, I'll show you how to do that in a second, as well as scales and naming. So in our case here, we've got the scale of our drawing. And if you select a viewport over here to the left, you can see that the scale down in the bottom right is set to 1 16th equals one foot. Now that's a pretty standard architectural scale, but if this ever changes and you don't notice and you don't update this scale text down here, if it's a dumb piece of text, i.e. not connected to anything, it'll be out of date and you could be plotting off the wrong scale on your drawings. Now to prevent that from happening, simply make it a linked field. So we've double clicked on our text. I'm gonna select this text here, choose insert field, and this time I'm going to go to the object category. This is going to allow me to choose an object. So I'm going to click field names, object, and then I'm going to click this little arrow here, which allows me to select any object and I can pull properties from that object. You could pull properties from say a rectangle or polygon and pull the area. That's helpful for say room text like this one over here. It could have the area of that room right underneath it and it's linked to that piece of uh, block. Now, in our case, we're choosing an object, we chose the viewport, and then you can see over here that I can choose standard scale. These are all the properties that are associated with that viewport. Now, you can choose any of these. You could choose the height, a layer, any of this, but in our case, we want the standard scale. If you're using custom scales, you could do that up here, but for the most part, you're going to be just using typical standard scales. I don't want to format it like forcing it into upper or lower case. I just want to keep it as it is in the standard scale style. Hitting OK is going to add that piece of text into my file. And you can see now that the scale is fully linked, 
if it ever changes, I just need to hit regen to update it. Now, see, my text is a little large here, so I can just select the field. I can just change my text to a smaller number, like 3 64ths here, which seems to fit relatively well. You can fiddle with this, change it up, create new textiles as needed, or I could have made this area a little bit bigger to make that fit, but this works for now. And now if that viewport changes and I regen, that text is going to update automatically. So if we unlock our viewport, change the scale to something like 330 seconds, you can see it's zoomed in. Now when I type in regen, this text down here has automatically updated. Now I can undo that and go back and you can see it's gone back to the 1 16th. Now, before I let you go, I'm gonna show you one more cool trick and that is using a block counter and inserting it into a piece of text. Now, if we go into our viewport here, we're going to lock it to make sure I don't accidentally move it around and I type in count. This is going to allow me to count blocks within the drawing. It's going to ask for the current area if you'd like to only count blocks within a specific area. So I'm actually going to just select the area of the floor plan. You can use the entire drawing, but you do run the risk of counting blocks that are outside of your area that you may be interested in if you have copies off in model space. If I hit enter now, it's going to bring up the count of all of the blocks within that area. You can select them to see each one highlighted. So this type of desk, desk three, doors, um, keyboards, sofas. Uh, in our case, we're going to pull the count of this style of chair, chair seven. So if I right click, I can simply insert the count field. Now, one thing to note is this is going to put it into the model space, which is not a big deal, but it is the default and it only kind of allows you to do that. But I'm going to show you a trick to add this to any piece of text or table or whatever you've got uh, within your drawing. So I'm just going to place it over here. I've clicked and it's now been placed in my drawing here. You can see it's quite small, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to now double click now that I've got this field. I can double click and I'm just going to select the field. You can see by double clicking on the field, the actual expression or code to create this uh, count. You can copy this and I'll show you where you can insert it later on into any other piece of text or table. And then all you need to do is change up the name of the block and it'll add a new count for that block type. But in our case, we're just going to hit OK. And I'm just going to select this field, hold Control and hit C or X to copy or cut that field. And now when I click out, I can just delete it or move it, whatever I want. I don't need that field or count anymore. What I'm going to do is go over to my notes or say a table or something else and simply paste it into there. So you can see I've got that shares. And now I've got a live count to how many block chair blocks I have in my drawing. If I type in regen, it's going to update. So if we go into model space here, delete a couple of chairs here. So I'm just going to delete these three from my drawing. You can see the count hasn't updated yet. But once I'm done with that, I can exit my viewport and I simply type in regen or save my drawing. You can see the count went down by three. And just as easily, I can go back into my viewport, type in CO for copy, and make a bunch of copies of this chair to increase my count. This is a great way, I'm typing in regen now. This is a great way to ensure that your counts are always accurate in your tables and pieces of text. This is also great for callouts, whether it's a drawing reference or section reference. If you're calling out other layouts, you could simply insert that C tab field into the callout. So you could have a leader over here and it says C drawing and then this field. Anytime that drawing changes, it's going to update that drawing number in that piece of text. It can be a leader, it can be an M text, it can be anywhere within the drawing. These fields are all linked together and going to save you a ton of time. Now, hopefully this has helped you get a better understanding of the power and usefulness of fields. There are a ton of other options, especially when you start using sheet sets or drawing properties within your drawing. These are just a few of the different methods. I highly recommend checking out some of my other videos, learning from my course, or just exploring on your, 
on your own time and seeing what else you can do with those fields as you insert them into your drawings. That's all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe by hitting that button down below and check out my AutoCAD Fundamentals Complete CAD Toolbox Package, which is available now, discounted using that link down below. Cheers and have a good one.